Do all self connection. Welcome back to Cronoso here on YouTube. Simulcasting with audio. It's me, Ryan Graham. I'm going to be the who, the what, the where, and the why. I think this match is the best match for me, anyways, on WrestleMania 4. And the who, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus Greg the Hammer Valentine. The what, a first round match in the WWF title tournament. When? March 27th, 1988. Where? Convention Center, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Why? Because of nostalgia and appreciation. Why is this nostalgia? Everyone's going to talk on this. Everyone in this Cronoso is going to talk about the two VHS tapes. For me, it would be across the street at my aunt's house in Rochdale, Massachusetts, where it was like a little convenience store, and I would just go in there and look at WrestleMania Four. It had two tapes. It was easy to watch. It was easy to order. And it was less time on the TV instead of playing with her dogs and cats where I gained, where I probably gained my allergy for said cats and dogs. But even as a kid in the early 90s, and this tape being two, three years old, I loved Hulk Hogan and the Rockers. And at that time, Valentine is kind of a jobber, pretty much, on his way out of the WWF. And Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is a cartoon dragon or on the other show or not in the WWF. So I don't really know of him, but I know of him pretty much as a kid in the early 90s around what, seven, eight, nine years old. Of course, I had both their Hasbros, but with me to my aunt's house when I went there to rent them, I was playing with them as I was watching whatever wrestling tape I would watch. And it was most likely this one. But even as a young you not really knowing what was what i appreciated this match because it was good it's solid as i'll get into but then again in the early in the mid 2000s i kind of grew out of wrestling a little bit graduated high school in 2004 i remember watching wrestlemania 19 i definitely remember watching wrestlemania 20 i remember going to a pay-per-view in Hartford, Connecticut in 2004. I don't really remember much in 2005. I know I didn't watch WrestleMania 21 live. The end, but I was playing football. I was playing flag football, so I went for the, I went to my friend's house afterwards for the main event. Nowadays, I would have skipped that flag football game. Now we get towards the end of 2005, early 2006. In WrestleMania, the DVDs have been released. Um it's a Thursday night, I believe. That's the night I played softball. Me and my girlfriend are at the mall. And we have some news that I guess I'm going to be a father. Well, I guess we are. I'm going to be a father. I'm a 19-year-old kid. I'm whatever, nervous, whatever. So what do I, I don't really know. What do I want to do? I, I probably found comfort in nostalgia when that DV, WrestleMania 4 set DVD volume 1 was looking right at me. Poor kid. Just started working two jobs to get ahead for an incoming kid. And fuck it. 50 bucks? Am I going to go home and watch this? Is this going to be the springboard for me to be become a wrestling fan again? I don't really think I ever fell out of it. But I didn't become obsessed with it again until this. So we go, I buy it. We go home. I, it's softball. So I got to jump in the shower, get clean. And she throws it in. That was nice of her. But she throws it in WrestleMania 1. And I said, Krista, no, WrestleMania 4. Eject, get it out, throw it in. It's WrestleMania 4. So we're watching it. She instantly falls asleep, just like all the time. Dead as a doornail. Done. Knocked out. So I'm watching it. I'm tired. I'm in and out. It's not like nowadays where you're on your phone or whatever. You, like a buddy would text you and so you jump on your Nokia and text them back or whatever. But I'm tuned in. Like, this is my youth. This is my nostalgia. I'm watching this. And this match catches my eyes. But even again, in my late early 20s, late teens, this match catches my eye again. And um, I appreciate it. So, the why nostalgia as a you i appreciated it then and then i appreciated it i'm not saying this match got me back in but that dvd set did get me back in it sparked my interest i would grab my laptop 
just what's going on with wrestling now again jump on wrestleview.com what i used to jump on pro wrestling.com like i used to just start googling shit and then i'm watching raw again i'm watching smackdown again i remember watching eddie versus kennedy i don't remember if i was like i just remember eavesdropping on it i remember watching shelton versus maybe HBK, but I forget Shelton versus someone in a raw match. I remember being back in by early December, 2005. I remember Armageddon in my first pay-per-view I watched live again was the Royal rumble 2006. So this DVD set was a springboard for me back into this. And this match is my most appreciated match within that. Now let's get into the match. No entrance for Valentine. He gets about Five, ten seconds of camera time. They announced him for 248 pounds. I don't know if I would have guessed that. I want to hear what you would have guessed Valentine's weight at. 249? I guess, right? Kind of like a big stocky guy, a little pot belly. Maybe, eh. I guess, yeah, probably right. And then we got Steamboat, big elaborate entrance. Carrying the kid. Maybe that tugged my heart a little bit, finding out I was soon to be a father. But matching gear, uh, I believe on the way down the ramp, Jesse says to Gorilla, well, if he's in trouble, he can tag out now. I thought that was cute. So anyways, uh, Steve gets in the ring, parades the kid around the ringside, hands the baby off to the career-destroying wife, also in red. Gorilla and Jesse here set the table early, presenting both these guys as former Intercontinental Champions and put over their endurance and their cardio as the match gets better, saying that they can go on all night in the tournament, and these two guys are set to do that. Steamboat grabs control early here with an excellent deep deep arm drag here. Really torques it in, gets deep into it. Valentine's does a great job flying over, and these guys are already cooking and rocking and rolling. Steamboat con uh, continues control here as he goes for three to four rapid near pinfalls. They have a, a, a little hiccup here on a crucifix pinfall, but still, they did a good job covering for it. it was a, this match was a little botchy. I don't want to be out here saying that it was excellent, perfect, but it was well, well worked. Early on here, it's, these guys are just cruising, kicking the shit out of each other. Gr Steamboat ends up losing control here as Hammer really just starts grinding down on him, as Hammer does. Hammer just continuously goes after the throat, as it was historically a uh, a sticking point for Steamboat, we would say. So they're really getting into their weak points here. They're really starting to grind them down. And this match is solid. The work is great outside the few hiccups. The, the rapid fire near falls from Steve Boat continue here. As soon as he can counter into control, he's going for a rapid pinfall. He is, his chop game is out of control tonight. Hammer does a great job here selling that. And we got a token hammer back body drop here from a flurry of chop exchanges from Steamboat. Hammer gets his first pinfall attempt here after a beautiful back body drop thing. Off, He grabbed his leg. Steamboat did a great job grabbing the front rope and really propelled himself to the middle of the ring. Hammer bounces off the ring. A flying forearm straight to the neck again as he continues to go for that. Really good kick out at two and a half. First pinfall attempt for Hammer, and it was successfully awesome. Guys, this, deep, this work continues. It's deep. It's strong. The strikes from Steamboat are furious. Hammer is a great seller. Steamboat is a sympathetically great seller. Um, is this match is just strong? It's it, as it continues. I'm not going to go move to move here, as I don't want to bore you to death, as I already have been. But anyways, it's I just can't put over the how strong this work is. By the way, Jimmy Hart has been shouting instruction the whole time, encouraging his guy. Jimmy Hart is a low key underrated manager in this time. Outshined by the brain, of course, but Jimmy is a solid. Solid manager. We're about a minute into the hammer, just thunderingly, thunderously chopping and beating down Steamboat here as we pan to Donald Trump and Jesse puts him over as his friend Donald. Is that a strike of Donald? My friend Donald as Monsoon puts over the striking of Valentine. Quick exchange here, fall, quick pinfall attempt from Steamboat after he counters out of a quick chop exchange. Hammer falls, of course. So, of course, quick pinfall. So, what we get here is we got the grit and grind of Hammer. Psychology is tight here, let's say. The work is good. Uh, we get the Hammer. He's trying to hammer him down, take him away, get him off his game, beat him down, because his endurance is strong. Then we get Steamboat, who can take a beating. 
right? That's the name of his game. He can take a beating. He can dish one out too. But he usually outlasts you or catches you with a quick pinfall or he's very urgent as a wrestler. So we're staying true to who we are within the structure. Guys, the deeper we get into this match, <laughs> the strikes are still coming. Harder, deeper, thicker. All right, so we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. Steamboat has finally found a pace in a groove where he can really just lay into Hammer as Hammer has been laying into him all match here. Steamboat gets him into the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. On the ninth one, Earl puts his little cheating ass in the way there, in the way of Hammer, so he stops the 10 count of the continuous headbutts into the corner here. Hammer, uh, Dragon gets frustrated, takes Earl, shoves him to the side. There's a little there's a little uh, back and forth there. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Little baby face fire gone a little bit too far. His urgency is overwhelming him. They continue to argue as Steamboat makes his way to the top rope as Valentine flops to the back. Valentine's makes his way to the top. They are still arguing. One, two, three. He's out of the ring. Beautiful crossbody attempt from the top rope. He really catches Valentine, but no. Valentine catches him. Reversal. Reversal. Grabs the tights. One, two, three. Steamboat was cheated, but it was a clean victory. However you want to decipher it, it was a really good match. Structure-wise, they scored. They stayed on on track here. They hammered the shit out of each other. The chop exchanges were great. Um, urgency from Steamboat was fantastic. Hammer stayed true to himself. Steamboat stayed true to himself. He got a little frustrated at the end. Hammer outsmarted him. Grabbed the tights. One, two, three. Solid match, guys. Solid. Three and a quarter stars. Uh Two big botches here, the cross, the crucifix, and like some weird wumbly spot in the bet in the on the corner from Valentine. But I'm not, you know, that's that's nothing here. These guys were had an excellent nine minute match. Uh, could have gone a little longer, would have gotten better, absolutely. But they're hampered to this structure of, you know, whatever here. I like how they put them over early as endurance monsters, you know, to kind of make them threats throughout the night. Uh, we figured we were going to get Steamboat Savage in a rematch in the second round. We did not. Valentine stole this. So we will have to see how Valentine's fares in his next match. Unfortunately, for you YouTubers, that's on audio. But for the everyone else, that'll be up soon. YouTubers, go find the audio. Cronoso, we have 15 to 20 guys. Each episode bring you a match review or a segment review or promo review, or whatever's going on in the history within the WWE. We're adding superstars. We're adding MSGs, Maple Leaf Gardens, Boston Gardens, whatever's coming your way next. But we will plug that all at the end. But I just want to throw that out to you here on the YouTube. All right, guys, catch you here. Also, catch out Aaron on part two on YouTube as Aaron brings you Demolition versus Strike Force here on YouTube. Later, guys.